In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about quarks for IB physics and the baryons and mesons they make, uh, as well as some conservation laws. If that sounds like complete nonsense to you, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's what this video is for. However, if you want to skip to a specific part of the video because you already have some background in the other th parts, uh, I've uh, put chapter times in the description so you can skip to parts you want. So I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with the basic model of the atom that is made of uh, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Protons and electrons have opposite charges of one elementary charge and negative one elementary charge respectively. And protons and neutrons have the same mass of one in atomic mass units. However, this is far from the full story. Although it turns out that electrons actually are fundamental particles and are actually part of a group of fundamental particles called leptons, let's put them aside for a minute and focus on protons and neutrons. Through experimentation and complicated mathematics, which I'm absolutely not getting into in this video, we realize that both protons and neutrons are actually made up of a combination of three up and down quarks. The name up and down is totally arbitrary. It, it's just to differentiate them. Now, since you can see that a proton has two up quarks and one down quark, and a neutron has two down quarks and one up quark, uh, as you can see in the diagram, I wonder if you would be able to set up a pair of simultaneous equations to find the charge of the up and down quarks. So maybe pause the video and try that now. Maybe what you found is that up quarks have a charge of two, plus two thirds elementary charges, and uh, down quarks have a charge of negative one third elementary charges. Uh, just as a sense check, if we plug those numbers in, two-thirds plus two-thirds minus one-third, yes, we get plus one elementary charge for the proton, and with the neutron we do minus one-third minus one-third plus two-thirds, which is zero. Perfect. Next, if I told you protons and neutrons have a baryon number of one, and you don't really have to know what a baryon number is yet, we'll get to that, could you figure out the baryon number of the up and down quark? I think you probably could. Maybe even just intuitively realize that the number of the up and down quarks are the same and that they're both a third. If you're confused about what the baryon number is, again, we'll get to that later in the video, just remember that it is something that's conserved. So that means that in any nuclear equations that you're doing, you have to make sure that your baryon number is the same on both sides. Uh, charge will be conserved as well in nuclear equations, but hopefully that's more obvious to you. Okay, so those are the only two numbers you need to know about quarks. But there is quite a lot more to know, the more theoretically speaking. Firstly, I should mention that there aren't just two quarks, there are six. There's the up and the down, the charm and the strange, and the top and the bottom. The up, charm, and top quarks are similar in that they have the same charge as each other. The down, strange, and bottom are similar for the same reason. They all have negative one-third elementary charge. However, they all have wildly different masses, and so these models that I'm showing aren't to scale at all. Furthermore, each of these quarks has an anti-quark variant. These other six are the, an the six anti-quarks, so the anti-up, anti-down, etc. And these bars that I've put on the top of the names of the quarks just indicate that we're talking about the anti-variants of those quarks. What does it mean for a particle to be an anti-quark? Well, Antiparticles in general, yes, they do exist, it's not just sci-fi, have the uh, same mass as the particle, but antiquarks have a baryon number of negative a third and have the opposite charge of their uh, quark relative. To complicate matters further, I'll also briefly mention that each quark comes in three colors, red, green, and blue. I don't mean literally, of course, because color doesn't really work at that, those scales, but the property is additive in a way that is similar to color and it'll be, be more important to think about when you're doing the strong nuclear force. In antiquarks, the colors are also the anti-color variant. So that means anti-red, anti-green, and anti-blue. Uh, maybe here you can see that the analogy doesn't really work because what does it mean to be anti-red? But hopefully you get the point. So really, there are 36 total antiquarks and quarks. I really lied about the, that too, huh? Um, a quick side note. Uh, now that you know about antiquarks, I'll introduce a different conservation law you have to know, the conservation of strangeness. This says that strangeness is conserved on both sides of an equation, where a strange quark has strangeness negative one and an anti-strange quark has strangeness plus one. 
and all other particles have strangeness zero. Bear in mind, this conservation law only applies in strong and electromagnetic interactions, how, and gravitational, I'll just quickly mention that. However, it does not apply in weak interactions. Anyways, uh, these quarks and antiquarks that we've learned about can be combined to make two kinds of particles, mesons and baryons, both of which are hadrons, uh, as hadrons are things that interact with a strong force, and quarks and they're the things they make up do do that. Baryons are triplets of quarks, and the examples you should know are protons and neutrons, which we've talked about. You should also know that antiprotons and antineutrons are antibaryons, and they are just made up of, tri of a triplet of antiquarks. Mesons, on the other hand, are pairs of quarks, and they're a little bit more crazy. They're made of a quark-antiquark -quark pair. Therefore, as quarks have a baryon number of a third and antiquarks have a baryon number of negative a third, Mesons have a baryon number of zero, which makes sense because mesons aren't baryons. You wouldn't expect it to have a baryon number at all. Uh, some examples of mesons are pions, which are combinations of down quarks and anti-up quarks, and up quarks and anti-down quarks, with the symbol pi minus and pi plus, respectively. And kaons, with the symbol k minus and k plus. K minus kaons are a strange quark and an anti-up quark, and k plus kaons are an up quark paired with an anti-strange quark. I'll let you check if those charges add up for me, though you should find that they add up to plus one and minus one, so just make sure that you do do that. Finally, I'll mention an important experimental limitation in observing lone quarks. Throughout this, this video, I've neglected to highlight the forces between quarks that are holding them together. That force is the strong force, and it leads to the issue of quark confinement. Quark confinement is the phenomena that occurs when you try pulling apart two quarks to get a look at just one. For example, if we took a meson like this negatively charged kaon, it turns out that you have to put so much energy into the quarks to overcome the strong force holding them together, that just as you're making the tiniest amount of progress, by E equals mc squared, you know that relation between energy and mass, you've put enough energy in to create mass. Two new quarks form and attach to the quarks you have. So your one pair of quarks would become two pairs of quarks instead of becoming a pair of individual quarks. Uh, this is important to remember as it means that we can never see a quark individually. Uh, all right, that's just about everything you need to know about quarks from their kinds, anti-quarks, color, hadrons, and quark confinement. Uh, be sure to watch some of my other videos covering parts of atomic physics if you need that. Uh, and subscribe if you want more physics or chemistry content. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.